everybody. Welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and the episode today is 179. We didn't quite make it to 180 for the end of the year, but we were close. Uh, we are doing a kind of a gift episode to you guys because we generally don't do a December show at all, but we've got Miss Cakes, aka Emmy Klein, is going to be doing a show on our Jerry's YouTube channel this next year. And I thought, what better way for you guys to get a little bit of a sneak peek and see her and what she's like and how amazing she is um, because you're gonna wanna watch her show. So it's my little gift to you guys for kind of dealing with this whole, with 2020 in a nutshell, right? So um, her show is going to be called Shut Up and Paint. All of the items that she's going to be using today on the show, if you go to the jerrysartorama.com website, you type in that little search box, the keyword JL179, that's going to pull up all of the items. If you're not in our Jerry's Facebook live group, I'm not gonna say shame on you because that doesn't seem very holiday and friendly like. So I'm going to say that exists and we've posted the image that Emmy is going to be using for this demo in that group so you can download it you can print it out and you can go back later and do this again with uh watching the episode again and play along if you didn't know that was there um also if you open up the document that i believe is linked at the top of this uh the words for the episode right katie there's the document so that you can link onto that mm -hmm. the image is actually in this document as well so you can print it out that way if you're not a member of the Jerry's Life Facebook group and you're, you just don't want to deal with Facebook. So either way, there's an image for you if you'd like to play along and use this. Um, so I'm gonna turn this over to Emmy so that we get maximum like fun out of this episode. Um, take it away, yay. Hello everybody. Uh, as Amy to told you all, my name is Emmy, but um, that's, that's a lot of Amy, Emmy, Amy. Uh, right? Yeah. So uh, you can call me Miss Cakes if you'd like. Uh, if you'd like to see any of my other artwork, you can go to my website, misscakesart.com, or you can see my Instagram, misscakes.art. Uh, I mainly have been focusing in portraiture. Uh, I have my BFA in illustration, just to kind of give you a little bit of background on me. Uh, and today I figured it would be fun, because it's the first day of December, to paint a Father Time Baby New Year situation going on that kind of represents a little bit of what we've been going through in 2020. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'm going to be working in Turner Crow gouache today. I uh, love the medium. It is not a traditional gouache. Uh, and to kind of give you an example, because I have my palette here where I had been um, painting previously with it, I'm going to just get a wet paper towel, just so you know. It, doesn't really re-wet like traditional gouache. Um, so whatever you do, don't squeeze out the whole, whole tube onto your palette and just let it dry because that's gonna make you wanna cry later. So let's just get rid of that. Uh, nice clean palette. I'm gonna be working on the, um, uh, this is the Soho Gray Toned Disposable Palette Paper. Very easy with cleanup, love that. And then I'm also gonna be working on some Da Vinci Pro panels. Um, this is the Ultra Smooth. It is pre-gessoed, which is super awesome, so you can literally just rip it open and start painting. Um, the image that I uh, posted for you all, um, this is, I've clearly drawn on this a lot, because um, I transferred it a couple times. Uh, I just literally printed this out with uh, computer paper, coated the back with a pencil because I could not find my transfer paper. <laughs> and then... Um, when you do of, that, what grade pencil are you using to make it easiest? Whatever I can grab. Okay. Uh, but the best way that I have found was like somewhere in the softer range. So okay. like B, uh, HB if you have it. Uh, I believe any kind of a regular school pencil is an HB. Just kind of run up the middle. HB or 2B, yeah. yeah. So any, any pencil you really have can work to do that. Uh, you don't need anything super fancy, but the softer lead is a lot easier to make that transfer because you'll get a lot more of the, um, the graphite that'll come off the paper. 
So that's what I've done here is I've already transferred my image um, and then I've actually coated it with a matte medium, uh, which I don't believe is listed in the products. No. Mm -mm. Technically. So I'm just, it's a habit I've gotten into is to give myself a nice even ground. Um, it is still very smooth. I put just a nice thin layer of it just to kind of coat it and uh, seal down my drawing. And then um, I'm going to go in with some acrylic, uh, acrylic wash on top of that. And uh, hopefully I don't mess this up. <laughs> Uh, if you, if I you have, go to her website, you'll see she does mess stuff up. So uh, that's that's the end result. So there's a lot of in between there where it's <laughs> I struggle bus. Speaking of struggle bus, um, I did transfer this just to kind of I was trying to be prepared, um, and I transferred this onto another panel and started uh, playing around with the the colors just to kind of give myself an idea of what I wanted to do. Um, and I, I definitely will admit, as an artist, I realized that this image, I feel like, is just a little too tiny for an 8x8. Eight eight. So if you have the ability to make it a little bit bigger, you know, go for it. If not, I mean, you can do what I do. It's totally fine. So uh, the other thing I'm going to be using, uh, I don't actually use this, but for those of you who are not great at mixing colors, uh, this mixing card set from Turner uh, has all the different colors and all the different ratios of how to mix all of these. It's just like there's so many different colors. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't really, really great at mixing your colors, that's totally okay. You can use that as kind of a cheat sheet. Um, then I'm going to be using my, I actually got the uh, Mimic Try Me brush set. Uh, I'm obsessed, obsessed with these brushes. Uh, mostly the, um, the flat ones, there's a half inch and a quarter inch. So this quarter inch didn't actually come in the Try Me brush set. I ordered it separately, but uh, totally worth it because I like the square. Mm -hmm. I kind of carve in all the different shapes of faces and different things of the, the colors and kind of the facets of the face. So um, those are the brushes I'm going to be using today. <coughs> and then, of course, the Aquamist because <laughs> you can. It actually, it's really helpful when you work with the uh, Turner Co Wash. It keeps your palette nice and wet and uh, moist. And I'm sorry it's, if anybody hates that word, but you know. It's, but it's, it's perfectly done rather than it yeah. being spritzy globs. Yeah, I, which I is gotta perfect say, for the acryl gouache because you don't. For sure. I will never go back to like a regular like Walmart spray bottle because no. that it, the mist is. You're like, that's not that big beautiful. of a thing. And then you use it and you're like, why yeah. have I not had 10 of these? Where have you been all my life? For sure. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll get started and uh, talk about my new series coming up a little yeah. bit while I'm doing it. Um, oh, and while you see, uh, can you see that? Is that on camera? Mm -hmm. the, the paint. Switching. Just checking. Make sure that's not. There it oh, is. There okay. Yeah, so I'm really not putting a whole lot of paint on. Uh, just the tiniest amount, just because these paints are so concentrated. And it helps to keep them moist with the uh, Aquamist, but it, I never really put that much on my palette. I can always put more, but I, I don't like to waste paint. I'm sure you guys don't either. So... This is why they're going to love you. Because I like to put out copious amounts of paint so it's easier for them to see. And yeah. then they always get really sad with me because I'm wasting things. No, yeah. so this is good. Okay, good, good. So um, there's the white. This is the... Oh, I'm not going to he's right that's John John is that Heine Jane. is it a Brilliant soft J <laughs> oh, J A U N E John John okay John. good John John yeah, Brilliant yeah that's color sorry um there's that one I I really like that for like the skin tones um they also have an apricot that's really mm. pretty uh, and then my other solid go-to's for skin tones is yellow ochre and burnt sienna because that gives you that nice fleshy tone once you mix it with a little bit of white. It's, it's very bright uh, just out of the tube. I'm also, I'm going to do a little bit of burnt umber too just to kind of give myself a, oops, sorry, we got a paint, paint snot bubble. <laughs> Use my paint tube. <laughs> All right. Um, and then I think a little bit of aqua blue. So I'm definitely not going to be able to finish this entire thing. 
because there's a, there's a lot going on in this image. Um, but at the same time, that's okay because with my new paint series, uh, video series, uh, the idea is to shut up and paint. Stop giving yourself excuses that you're, you don't have time, that you uh, have to go wash your dogs, and then you have to go, you know, clean out your car, or that you gotta do this and that, and, you know, if you have a family like me, tell your eight-year-old child, stop saying, hey, 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 hey. Uh, yeah, <laughs> give me an hour. One hour of paint time, no interruptions. And uh, he's learned my favorite new word, no. <laughs> he says, Miss Abby? I'm like, nope, nope. And then he goes away. And it's, it's not that I'm trying to be mean. It's that he has to respect the time that mm -hmm. sometimes I just need to do some art. And uh, it's what keeps me sane, uh, especially this year. So um, that's kind of the whole concept of the art series. And uh, I hope you guys kind of join me with it. Um, like you said, if you find that you just haven't had that time, sit down. Do some art. It's okay if you don't finish it. It's okay if you don't like it. There's definitely a video at the end. I... I very much dislike my painting, so, you know. It's all right, they're not all winners. But you always can have another hour the next day. The practice is the winner. <sighs> That's true. All right, so am I painting Old Man 2020 or Baby New Year? Which one am I? Because I don't think I'm gonna get both. Uh, well, you've got Baby New Year kind of more more roped out on the other one. Yeah. Let's so do, do 2020, yeah. Yeah, sure, all right. So let's start with his little dome piece. And then um, I always, I swear, I always pick too big of a brush to begin with. Um, but that's okay. Yep, I'm just gonna switch to a smaller one. So I'm mixing the John Brilliant and some white just for a base tone, just to kind of give him a little bit of a fleshy color. I am not being exact or precise with this because I'm definitely gonna be going over it again with other colors, especially for his beard and his sweet mustache. Hopefully I'm not leaning over into that. Oh, there you. Uh, and I'm sure by the time I finish this, I'm gonna also think that I made him far too pink because that happens. But, let's give him a little bit more yellow in the back here because skin tones are never the same in any two places on your body. While you're doing that, I'm actually gonna take the drawing that I printed out and I'm gonna tuck it and set it right up kind of in front so they can see since the transfer is kind of faint mm -hmm. just they it can is see. yeah I definitely didn't there want we go. to um have it super dark but. slide that down the panel down just a touch there we go there we go perfect so you guys can see what I'm doing so yeah I added in a little bit of the yellow ochre just for a little bit more yellow but I feel like that's a bit too yellow so I'm going to add some of this burnt sienna. And I definitely have not washed my paintbrush off, which is okay. Sometimes you get the better mixes that way. Exactly. You get the, just enough little tad. Bit of all of it. Um, and you know what? While I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to add just a touch of the blue over here in that burnt sienna. Oh, uh, gosh. what? I think I used ultramarine blue over here um, because... I think I grabbed a little too much. I'm going to put in some shadows. Right here on his chest where he's definitely, since he's leaning over, he would be in shadow. That's why in my, uh, my sketch, I have like the, the lines mm. indicating shadow, just because uh, that's more or less uh, a reminder to me that that needs to be darker. <laughs> Artist's note making. Yes, it's like shorthand. Mm-hmm. Only a little sloppier. 
Oh, and I, I moved my canvas around quite a bit too, which is okay. His armpit. So the way that I, I'm like so bad, I usually mix my paint on the palette with my brush. <laughs> Shouldn't do that, should use a palette knife, um, but I just, I, I never got in the habit. I don't know? either. Yeah. I think um, with, the, with the acrylic wash especially, it's it, you would be cleaning your palette knife constantly so many because times. it dries yeah. so fast that it's um, not worth it. So because I usually work with these flat brushes, um, I want to keep that, um, here you probably see it on the, the close up a little bit better, I want to keep that nice sharp um, edge to it. So when I do mix my paint, I tend to just like flip flop it like this just to kind of mix it and keep that nice flat edge to where it's, um, all my bristles won't get completely damaged. I don't, I never scrub because that will destroy your brushes so fast. Plus it works it way up in the ferrule and then mm -hmm. that's a no, no with wash. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Plus you're never really going to paint with the, this part of your brush. No. Uh, all right, so his hand would be in shadow down. I'm kind of just trying to imagine if a light was hitting him from the top here. Like part of his face is going to be in shadow, the part that's kind of pointed down towards the ground, um, the part of his hand right here, uh, maybe even like some of his knuckles. I am totally making this up though. There is really no right answers. It doesn't have to look perfect. The nice thing about those brushes is being synthetic, they clean so easily with the acrylic wash. Yes. Yes, and then they, they also, because they're a synthetic squirrel, mm. they can give you, with the synthetic, it can give you a little bit stronger point over a natural squirrel, but then it also still can absorb a lot of the loose, mm -hmm. kind of more fluid. When you thin it down, more it's a little bit more fluid. Yes, they definitely. It can hold a lot of, of paint. They definitely do. I think that's probably why I've been super obsessed with them. Oh, sorry, I need a... I also like to... Uh, I'm saying that because I know people are going to ask a question. Yeah. So I'm already like... Well, they're, they're mostly anticipating uh, that I'm assuming they were, they were made for watercolors, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they definitely suck up all of your paint, yes. which is really awesome. Um, which is why it works so well with the acrylic wash, but with any water-based media, I usually mm -hmm. use these just because they hold so much. But, um, yeah, what I was doing, by the way, uh, is when I do clean it off, I do just kind of, again, keep my bristles nice and sharp. Um, just to kind of be nice to my brush and uh, get it ready for when I start painting next time. I am missing something red. The question is which red? <laughs> There's so many options. Permanent red, permanent scarlet. Ooh, I do like carmine. Carmine is a fun mm. color. Let's do a carmine. Again, I don't need a whole lot. Just a tiny, tiny amount. Cause like even even that I think you probably can't. Mm -mm. Ugh. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see. You can't even see. There's just the tiniest amount on mm -hmm. that, and that's definitely too much. See that? It's so pigmented. I love this paint. Let's see a little bit of that, just to kind of tone it down. Mm, nice. And then mix in some white. Because and I. I, I don't know if this is going to sound great or not, but I'm, I want him to, to look almost like pasty. Like, I don't want him to look nice and healthy and tanned. No. And mm -hmm. I want him to look like he's been through 2020. <laughs> you know? But I do want him to still look alive. So when that is, um, when I'm painting skin tones especially, um, there are certain spots where you want to hit with more of a rosy color. Your elbows, the top of your shoulders, your nose, your cheeks, your chin, um, and your hands. Hands and feet. 
as well, um, which is why when I did the original Baby New Year, um, I actually lost the drawing on his feet, um, but I was putting in some more reds there. There's a little bit more red in his elbow, his hands, his cheeks, um, and that just kind of makes people look a little bit more alive. Less like, less like a zombie. <laughs> Unless you're painting a zombie, which then, I mean, go, go crazy. But that, you'd have to start messing with the, uh, That's the Halloween episode, toes. not the New Year's episode. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so I want him to have a big red nose. Maybe not that red, though. I might come back and tone that down, but that's okay. For right now. I also know, um, cause I was looking at a whole lot of anatomy to get this drawing done and make it make sense. Um, which pretty much just image searching online. And I could not find anything that looked like I wanted it to. So I had um, Andrew stand up. <laughs> <laughs> they know who Andrew is. Uh, uh, um, so he actually. <laughs> Andrew at 97. Was he what? I said Andrew at 97. Was he? No, I'm on... joking that this is. Oh, your, oh, yeah. Like at 97 years of... old. I was like, wait, was he on Jerry's? <laughs> 97? I need to watch that. <laughs> He's on 179 now. <laughs> but yeah. That's awesome so. that he does that. That's Yeah, no. Perfect. If you have even a friend or especially when you're painting people, just yes. because it's it's so hard to just make up anatomy sometimes, um, to have someone stand up or even yourself. Um, you can stand up and look at yourself in a mirror. Take pictures mm -hmm. if you have it. Uh, the ability to in the, the mirror. Foreshortening, you can, it's one thing to, yeah. to imagine somebody front and back, the foreshortening aspect of it. If you've got any sort of angle is what you have to really have a visual mm -hmm. to get where it's going to read right yes you know what i haven't done <laughs> that's so satisfying i know so right right the sound is wonderful too this you know what this reminds me of is that evian in a bottle like the spray evian <laughs> have you ever seen that yes it's like my dad. it's water for your face mm -hmm. because water for your face i guess your face knows no. Please, you're a little dry. I have never seen that until you, Katie. <laughs> I love it. Like, the hotel in Argus Carolinas and airplanes get very dry. Yeah. They do. They really do. All right. So I know I said I wanted him to be pasty, and I'm, like, doing the exact opposite here. <laughs> He's not pasty enough. It's okay. The cool thing about this paint is that you can layer. Um, I am actually using quite thin washes. So I am uh, almost using it like watercolor, but uh, I usually do that for the first couple of layers just to kind of um, not lose my drawing as well. It helps. I'm actually painting over his hair. Yep. Yes, I am. I guess I want to turn that down a little bit, though. Too dark. Do do that. You just like forget where you were painting before. Mm-hmm. Whoops. We do have a question. All right, what you got? Somebody on YouTube said, I noticed you don't seem to be using much water or mist. Is this normal with the acrylic wash as opposed to regular wash? Uh, mm. I think you are. I think it's just because yeah. they're not seeing the water bucket. It's yeah. not, they're not maybe getting the, yeah. I'm using, the I'm using quite a lot because uh, this, this is actually really, really pigmented. I only want to mist my palette um, just to make sure that these little blobs of paint stay wet and don't start drying out. Um, 
but I am using just because I mean you can see over here how thin that is because you can kind of see the gray through it it's actually quite watered down um, but you can use it I wouldn't use it straight out of the tube it's so pigmented it would kind of crack on you I think uh, yeah because it's, it's, it's supposed not to be a what two to one ratio it's, it's a it's like a concentrated yes. paint and because it doesn't have the resins in it if you yeah. make it too thick it will crack because it doesn't have the the pl plastics kind of mm -hmm. in it to keep it flexible yeah which is just you gotta kind of play around with it and know your medium um, but it's, it's a really fun uh, type of paint to play around with it's it is very similar to traditional wash uh, as far as kind of when you're layering it down uh, only it like I said it has more of that um, permanence the acryl mm -hmm. part of it so it doesn't really lift back up once you start going back over it um, like traditional gouache would re-wet which is pretty fun actually good segue into the next question oh perfect is there an advantage is there an advantage to using the gouache instead of acrylics that is, I think, personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, just because it works differently than acrylic. It definitely still dries pretty quick. Um, these right here, I mean, it's already dry. It dries really fast. So that's not any real difference. Um, it is super matte. So if you're doing traditional illustration and you just need to kind of lay down quick layers, like really opaque, layers of paint and you work maybe more graphic that would be a one reason to work with it a little bit more than acrylic because acrylics can also be more transparent um but it's it's all personal preference really but i i illustrations it, most of the time when you're done uh you scan it in and send it off to like you know newspaper or magazine whatever uh corporation or something business like that you're working with because usually it's not like an individual person so you don't need um, any kind of a gloss you'd want that in the flat mat that's yes. that's where it would be a really big advantage mm -hmm. but again it's if you like the way that it works and you like the way that it looks at the end I guess what's up I hope well, I answered your question if you I think the biggest thing between the two is besides that matness for mm -hmm. illustration, this is much. Just, this dries a lot faster. You can hit a deadline with something this size yeah. with acrylic wash, like in half the time I think, because you can just keep. Where like you might be like, I need to walk away for five or ten minutes and just kind of let this set yeah. because you're painting so much thinner mm -hmm. with it um, because you have to thin it more. Where you can't expect this to then have kind of more of that painterly approach where you've got are really showing enough thickness where there's some brush strokes and things like that mm -hmm. um like traditional acrylic is going to get you yeah i, I feel like agree. bang for the buck though i feel like a kit of this and a kit of acrylics this is going to go a lot longer way because oh, it's for so sure. much more concentrated yeah i mean like you can see how small amounts of paint that i put on the palette i'm still wasting paint yeah. Yeah. i mean it's it's unfortunate but like there's it just there's so much paint on the palette and it's just the medium so this tiny little tube will last me yeah. forever mm -hmm. which is really awesome especially if you want to try it out yes it's one of those things that like you can try it out and if you don't like it you can always gift it to a friend and then you know if they don't like it they can give it to a friend and at the end of it it's still a full set of paints. You're not going to use like the entire tube right. of white. <laughs> but let's be honest, you're not going to gift it to a friend. No. Definitely I think I just not. kicked something. Sorry. Okay. All right. So kind of made a bit of a purple with the carmine and ultramarine blue. I'm trying to tone it down just a little bit with white, and I might also start adding in a little bit of yellow with the yellow ochre. Might actually work really well, just because um, I want to tone down the the purpliness of it. But it's shadow is what I'm looking for. 
again. I think I'm painting over his eyebrow. That's okay. He didn't need that eyebrow. So, uh, in just especially talking about the time, you can see that you, with, you know, skin tones and stuff are very difficult to paint. You did a lot of setup for explaining the products and talking about yeah. the process. We're only at six o'clock and ah. we, no, but I mean, <laughs> you, you, you haven't been painting a full 30 minutes and you you can already see the person, you can see shadows, you can see, I mean, so this can, you can continue to work very quickly because mm -hmm. it dries so fast. Yeah. Because it's nice and thin, you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the other cool thing, especially for like me or other uh, parents out there, if you are, you need to stop and go um, feed your child, you know, you yeah. can do that and then come back and then it's still, uh, as long as you, you know, try to keep something like this uh, moist. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to like mist it every now and then, but you'd probably be able to come back within a fairly, I wouldn't say like an hour. You might be able to come back uh, in like 15 you know, minutes, you know? You can mist it and tint it with tin foil. Yeah. Like, so it's raised a little bit. I've done that before when I've go. worked like late at night. Like I need to go just take a break. Um, we need breaks. Yeah. Breaks and th good. that works really, even when it's really hot and humid, like in the summer, you can... Uh, missed it, turn it with tin foil, and you know, it'll stay pretty well. Yeah. Oh, the other really big thing that I think that, and that people need to understand, especially with the turner, is you can't paint. This has to be done on hard surfaces. Mm -hmm. It either needs to be done on a on a watercolor paper where you're not going to be bending it, or on panels. You don't want to do this on a stretched canvas because yeah. if you're painting it all in layers, um, just because of the low resin in it to keep it matte you can have cracking with it so mm -hmm. that is the one thing that just to point out that's always good to remind people for sure it is not flexible i'm sure people just saw my face did you this is um just to kind of make sure that everyone knows what i'm reacting to i i put down paint colors this is how i paint i, I end up putting down paint colors and then like I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the wrong color. For sure. The beauty of that, it dries so quickly, you can go right back over Exactly. Here. I am definitely going to let that dry because I, I don't like that. That's okay. I'm going to take a break. People are wondering how you're going to handle the fabric. The fabric? Um, it's draping. Okay. I can actually, you know what? Let's, let me just get this right here while I'm thinking about this, and then I'll jump into that. Why not? So, lots of people would like to know why why Miss Cakes. Why Miss Cakes? What's the origin of that? They feel like there's a story. There is a story, and if oh. I told you, I'd have to uh, find each and every one of you. No, oh. No, it's, it's really not that um, fancy of a story. It's just the only nickname that's ever stuck. Uh, my brother calls me Cakes. So it's That's just, cute. yeah, like I'll walk in and he's like, hey, cakes, like it's, you that's know, cute. it's just the name that stuck. And, um, cause we're so close in age, we had a lot of the same friends and, uh, I know it was my friend Cody and if he's watching, he'll just be like jumping around, real excited. Um, he, I want to say he actually started calling everyone noob cakes. It, I don't know why we were teenagers. There was no rhyme or reason for it, but he did, and I was the only one that it like stuck with. That was <laughs> so it just it turned into cakes, and then it turned into Miss Cakes, and then that's just kind of where it was. So that's that's, that's about it. All right, um, just because I'm gonna try and kind of keep this area clean for you guys to see, I'm just gonna take a wet cloth and clean this a little bit. Excuse my uh, jiggling the table. All right. So I still want you to be able to see the, the paint colors I use. And this will dry so it won't actually lift, really lift back up. The only reason why it's actually lifting off of this palette right now is because it's a palette paper mm -hmm. and it has that like yeah, that that surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah, otherwise <laughs> it would be. It would stick. Yes. <laughs> for sure. Which is the beauty of palette paper for acrylic wash. Oop. And you know Because it sticks actually... to everything and then you can't get it off. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
Let me actually mist these right now because I can see my paints are getting a little dry. Yep, that's already drying out a little bit. That's okay. All right, so for his drape. Oh, I forgot. That's actually all skin right there, too. Um, so you can kind of see the difference. And so I kind of remind myself <laughs> not to paint his back blue. Um, I'm just going to lay down a quick tone here. Doo, 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 doo. He's got one of those fancy cutout dresses. Right? Yeah, right. Aren't those a thing now? Yeah. Probably. Or like you, you it's have... very Gandhi like. He's got a very Gandhi like a Gandhi <laughs> wrap. <laughs> toga party. Yes. Maybe he is. I don't know. He was at the worst 2020 toga party. <laughs> this all year's right, been a toga go. party. That's about but, yeah. I mean we've all been able to kind of dress like that though. Hey, really. I I have not <laughs> worn real pants in so long. We made her put on real pants. Yeah. That's, that's... You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing pants today. That's actually, my sister-in-law was like, you're wearing pants? I'm like, yeah, they're not yoga pants. They're not <laughs> jeggings. They're real, actual pants with a button and a zipper. <laughs> All right. So I definitely did not want the like straight aqua blue color um, just because it, I feel like that's just a little too bright. Yeah. Um, but again, like you can still see how much water I'm mixing in. But, uh, like, you can maybe see yes. the pigment over here, yeah. way different. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm kind of toning it down with a little bit of this, um, John, Br John Brilliant. Jean. Jean. Jean? It's French, for yellow. Jean. I'm about to go to France for Maybe residency, and I need to learn my French. Right? Don't anybody... say it with a southern accent. Jean. Jean. Oh. No. No, that would be Jean brilliant. That'd be irritating. I'm sorry to anybody who speaks <laughs> fluent French. My bad. Yes. All right. Um, I'm gonna need more water. There we go. So, oop, I got a, I got a hair. I don't know if that's my hair or fuzzy from the table, but there's a fuzzy. All right. So I'm going to first just color the whole thing in. And actually, if I get a little bit over the, is that, it's not a sickle, it's a scythe? Or is it a sickle? Uh, a sickle is kind of the same thing. I think scythe has a very um, negative connotation to it. Like. Where sickle is more for like. Farming. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what Harvesting. it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be for harvest because that's yeah. the idea. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I think believe a scythe the, is more just like, yeah. Well, yeah. That no. menacing kind of. We don't need that. Not for no. 2020. All the, it's kind Be of like duly symbolic. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I don't, it, I don't even care if I get a little bit of the blue on there. It's, it's not going to hurt it. I can cover that up later, but I definitely want to. And I know they're probably saying, we want to see it closer. They're, they're, oh. they're having a little bit of technical camera difficulty. So yeah. they're working on it. They're going to zoom back into it in just a minute. So. Good. Cause I'm not looking up. Well, it was just more so they wouldn't, because otherwise everybody. I didn't like, even realize. Start the chant. Zoom in, zoom in. They they chant. They do. I'm for it. <laughs> All right. So again, I am starting with a relatively thin wash, just so I can still see my drawing through it, um, and to kind of give it that base layer of color and then I'm going to start carving out my shadows as well and then oop I got some on his tummy whoops that's okay It's also part of the process is to make mouth noises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I am not laying down a very nice, like, even layer. It's messy. It's choppy. It's okay. And then there's a touch. 
much of his, I guess we're calling this a toga. It's a little bit in here. Now that you're painting it in, it's almost like the, all I could think of was airplane with the Hare Krishna scene. It's like, it's I like a blue movie. version of the orange. It is. It's very uh, monk-esque. Yeah. So, a lot of the imagery for Father Time does have him mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a very, almost Romanesque yeah. toga type situation. Mm, I'm trying to remember what I drew. You ever do that? Like, <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah, I think that's part of his... That looks about right. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, and that's why I have the two different blues down. I have the, um, ooh, that was a lot, whoops. I have the aqua blue for the, the base kind of color, and then I have this ultramarine, just because it has more of that cool, um, or uh, I'm sorry, warmer tones to it. Um, kind of reminds me of almost like a purpley blue. Uh, so I want to use that for my shadows. We just had an episode that we talked about that kind of stuff a little ways ah, back, so this is good. Color theory? It's not just Crazy Amy that says that, see? I went to school for colors. <laughs> they were just like, but it does it, but it's still blue. Yes. I had a whole college more. class on yep. color. <laughs> <laughs> I regret nothing. That was the best class. Oh, it was. It Actually, it was like my hands down favorite class. Yep. There was a lot that I figured out after I got out of the class and was like, that's what she was talking about. Yep. Yeah. But it's always that 3 a.m. epiphany. This makes so much sense now. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's 3 a.m. and you have an assignment due. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. I better paint that. <laughs> yeah. When was this? Oh. Today's Tuesday? <laughs> I don't even think I put a wrinkle here, but we're just going to put, we're going to add a wrinkle. Because my brain said wrinkle. I love how the little shadows all of a sudden give it such a 3D. Yeah. With how it follows the form. And I'm not, I'm not trying to blend or anything. I'm just literally laying down chunks of color. Um, just because it's uh, time limit, I probably will come back and put in more tones, but even when I do uh, different tones for the different blues, uh, I try not to mix when I'm blending and stuff like that. I, I just lay down chunks of color. Mm. Um, even in a portrait in the face, it looks like I'm mixing. For the most part, I'm just laying down color. It's the layers that kind of make it look as though yeah. it's mixed. Especially when you use it so thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus optical illusions. Yep. It's Ooh, magic. Yes. It is. It's like glitter in paint form. I should have gotten some, like... Oh, uh, yeah. Where's my glitter and confetti? Right. Katie? I know you have glitter. And confetti. <laughs> what kind of glitter? Yeah. That is the question. Oh, sorry, I hope I'm not like leaning over and doing... No, no. No, you're good. Okay, good. I'm trying to be very conscious of where my head is, so yep. I'm not... It's like you've done this before. Just a couple times. So, probably going to make that area a little bit darker. And a little bit more purple, just because it's gonna be right up against this other shadow that I have coming up here, kind of where his hand is gonna be. And this is what I mean by like, when I add in other tones, I try not to blend. I mean, that's still wet, so it's going to blend just a little bit but um, not a ton. So just laying down 
chunk the color. Spot on my paper towel. Need a little bit more of this blue. Get some of my other. Oh, hold on. Miss break. <laughs> so I cook. Mm -hmm. Right? It's so much fun! I promise, I'm always this weird. Watch my videos, you'll see. <laughs> called artistic license. It can apply to more than just the painting. I'm for it. Andrew on YouTube has a question. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, Andrew on YouTube. He said, that is a really great idea for a painting. Where do you draw inspiration for your paintings? My weird brain. <laughs> um, no, seriously, my weird brain. Um, I will randomly, and this mostly happens at night for whatever reason, I will wake up in the middle of the night because I sleep really badly and I will have just random ideas for paintings. So yeah, that's, that's kind of about it. Um, I try not to get up, but I will end up having to write it down or else it's just going to be stuck in my brain. So I have a ridiculously long list on my phone, uh, the notes section, like a taker. Mm, yeah. And I have you. just like random, like me as a Sasquatch. Yeah. That's on the list. And I'm actually in the notes. It says glue faux fur down. <laughs> I want to see this so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. If that, if you guys really want to see yes, that, that will be please. one of my videos. I will. <laughs> Oh my god. Figure out how to do a self portrait. Yeah. With faux fur yes. as me yes, as a me. Yeah. yeah. See? Yeah. <laughs> how well a crib wash works with mixed media as well. We can make this happen. I love it. But yeah, that's that's how my brain works. This yeah. I'm like I said, I, I tell well, I told you earlier, I tell my kid every day he is so weird and never lose it. So <laughs> hold on to the weird that you got, because it's awesome. So for the most part, all this like really light blue is going to end up being covered up again. Oh, it's getting, it's still getting a little bit too bright. I wanted him to be wearing a really dingy, really worn well, toga. Well, luckily, that's the underpainting, so yeah. it can be toned down really easily. So I definitely, yeah, I'm gonna have to tone that down later. Um, but like I said, there's there's no way I'm gonna be able to finish this. In the hour that we have. Yeah, right. Plus of the intro and you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. I'm sure being like, there who's this it. lady? Yeah. <laughs> you know. But we'll post it. Yes. We will post it wonderful. for you guys to check out at a later time. Um, I will probably even post it on my Etsy shop for sale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Maybe even prints. Oh, know. that would be fantastic. Yeah. I think that would be perfect for prints. And if the uh, inspiration hits me, maybe even t-shirts, but you know, that's pushing it. <laughs> oh, don't lean forward. So with his, uh, this fabric, I am, again, making this up, kind of, just in my head. Uh, but 
the only reason why I'm kind of doing the shadows and stuff like that in my head is because I've painted fabric so many times. Um, if you guys have trouble kind of visualizing stuff like this, they have those. Yeah. The, the little mannequin dudes. Mm -hmm. yep. You can absolutely take mm -hmm. one of those small ones, drape it with fabric. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have, you have sheets on your bed, you have a pillowcase. I mean, I... t-shirts, cut it in slices. Exactly. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Go, go ahead and grab some reference, you know? Um, and try and figure it out that way. Um, but even, even when I do stuff like this, there's a solid possibility that I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, so I'll, I'll take my time and kind of make sure that I really understand my drawing before I try to <laughs> attempt to paint it. Mm -hmm. Although on occasion and on, it's definite, often, I get way too uh, gung-ho and jump into things. And then I have to kind of take a step back and be like, oh yeah, let me remember my training as an artist <laughs> <laughs> and do a little bit more prep work here. But that's okay. That's what you guys mostly don't see on the back end of like my Instagram and oh, uh, I have my YouTube channel too. I don't even know if I mentioned that earlier. My own YouTube channel where I do art shenanigans nice. as well. Um, but yeah, most of that stuff, the prep work of me trying to figure out what on earth I'm doing is not on camera, and you don't see the, the pictures online, um, but well, You also don't see, what, you, what people also don't see when they look at people's paintings is the hours of experimentation for yeah. things from years before that you're drawing on that knowledge. For sure. Um, that, that, you know, it's not about... This doesn't this, just this happen. sounds weird. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not about like some sheer brilliance that happens in the act for most artists. It's 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 this built up knowledge that you almost forget because it's become so commonplace mm -hmm. from the experimentation. I think that it's hard to put into a verbal dialogue for people to really get to try and understand. Yes, yeah. and that's why I I tend to forget those things, especially when yes. I'm in situations like this. Yes. It's like, oh yeah, by the way this is why I'm doing this. Yes. Um, so if you guys have questions on things like, why are you doing that? Um, feel free to ask because I will, I'm trying to explain, but I sometimes don't very well. Um, this, I've been doing this since, oh God, math. Uh, yeah, I can't, uh, my brain doesn't math well. Yeah. Um, too long. It's been, you're, you're stuck in your right of, side of your brain right now. So yeah. it's hard to get that left side to be like, give a number. Please don't make me do this. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's just, it's been many, many years that I've been doing this and that's kind of, again, it goes back to the idea of the concept of my, my art channel, uh, that's going to be the, the video series coming out is, um, just paint. It's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to look great. It's not always going to be finished the first time you sit down. You might really dislike it. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> um, that's a, I mean, there, there are things in that that I like, but that was kind of part of the prep for today, is I wanted to make sure I figured that out. Mm -hmm. So you guys don't have to see me struggle too much. <laughs> but um, that's the, the only way you're going to get better is to sit down and paint. Um, now, I mixed up that ultramarine blue and some of that uh, burnt umber for a nice luscious blue. Uh, and I'm gonna actually use this, um, oh, this is a number two round. I'm gonna just do a little bit of line work here just to kind of give it a little bit more depth. Um, I probably will make this look a little bit more graphic designy than I normally work in. So like lines and things like that kind of when I did the um, Baby New Year, I actually, this this outline here, uh, I feel like really saved the painting. <laughs> Just because it's so small, it, it's yeah. hard to kind of define those features without using a line, for me mm -hmm. anyway. Um, so I'm, uh, I don't know if you want to call it cheating, but I'm just it's using It's like the illustrator that. in you. It's a, yeah. I think that, and sometimes for this kind of thing, that makes it, you know, it's not a I feel like it's a little bit more successful, yeah. 
the one thing I never do, um, and this is just me personal preference, uh, I never use solid black lines. I always use a toned down version uh, or a, like a darker version of the color that I'm using. So like, I mean, it's, it's a dark blue. Yeah. So it never looks like I have done a, like a full on this drawing yeah. and then just kind of uh, yeah. coloring book. I mean, yes. not that it's wrong yeah, to use like black lines. Yeah, like a graphic lines. novel yeah. kind of style. But that's, yeah. that's not what I'm really going for. And that's what you want to do. Feel free. Well, and it's it's something that, that as people learn and start out, they tend to do that mm -hmm. just out of lack of of knowing more. Yeah. But it's like a it's a way to have someone read it as a dark color or even a black without it actually being black. Yeah. Which I think just reads better. I hope nobody thinks that I'm like use black lines you're wrong please don't think no that. no 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 they, they, this is this is how people learn it's it's mm -hmm. it's understanding the process of kind of of evolution with within an artist and within technique and everybody's going through that we all went yeah. through that we've all been five yes so it's it's fine it's, i actually just posted some of my really 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 early did art you really oh my god my, i drew a face and it looks like a potato <laughs> It was a self-portrait. And fun fact, my, my niece, she's, I want to say, oh gosh, I want to say she's like three, maybe four. She said, it looks like a potato. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, it does. For sure. You're like, but I got better. I did. <laughs> I, I got swear. better. <laughs> oh. Potato paintings. What did I say? Kids say the darkest they're, things. Yes. They're really honest. They're brutally honest. Super it's fantastic. Honest. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm like, I am so off camera here. Whoops. How close are we getting, Katie? I know it feels like it's. It's right at that time. Oh no. So yeah, that's kind of how I'm. What I'm doing right now with the fabric. Is probably how I'm going to continue to approach the skin tone and like I said I knew I was not gonna finish this so oh, that's, <sighs> that's perfectly fine it's like you said the show is about not worrying about that concept of every time you sit down it's got to be a finished masterpiece piece of artwork. yeah no and, and you can do that I mean you can work on that in blocks of time and mm -hmm. get a finished piece it's just getting over that mental hump of it's all right that it's not done. Yeah. So. I struggle I, with that deeply. I think all of us do. For sure. Because we all want it to be, we want it to be right the first time and we want to <laughs> like it and we want it to be done. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. No. I, uh, for the longest time, I would sit down and paint one thing and then I would not go back to it. And if it wasn't done, it wasn't ever right. done. And I had to, I had to seriously get myself out of that habit. Um, bad habits of an artist so yeah I mean it's it's one of those things that you may or may not struggle with that but if you do just try your best to do better and shut up and paint Perfect. Sure. you know and I say that with love and yeah. to make this. no it's it's very much with love it's yeah. it's the I think this is gonna be a great show because it's gonna make people realize that it's we're all kind of in this together and we mm -hmm. all no matter what level we're at we all still struggle with the same types of concepts and emotions about our art mm -hmm. and but it's also a way for them to see how you work and learn different techniques by yeah. watching it be done you know I, I think that as artists we're such visual people it's one thing for somebody to tell you what to do it's an absolute another thing that light bulb goes off when you see it being done so I think that that's, this is going to be a very beneficial educational show for I people. So. And if it's not it. educational, you'll at least get to see me yes. put my foot in my mouth <laughs> several times. So. But there's fun in that too, you know? Yeah. Lots of dad jokes too. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Dad jokes. That's, you know? I like it. I like it. I feel like everyone should have dad jokes. 
All right, Katie, do we have an art at home challenge that we're supposed to tell we people do. about today? Okay, so one last, this is the last art at home challenge for the year, right? Popping up with a holiday edition, correct? Mm hmm. Okay, yeah. so. We liked it so much we thought we'd bring it back for a special holiday treat. It was pretty successful and, and fun. So this is what Jerry's Art Around is going to be doing. It is a holiday edition art at home challenge, all right? It has to be a holiday theme, holiday art, any sort of December based holiday. I guess that's probably the best way to put it, right? Yeah, winter, Des December. December, New Year's. Tis the season. Any, any of the, you know, religious themed holidays, whatever. Holiday theme. A thousand dollars in prizes, guys. Ooh. It's just going to be one. We're not doing weekly ones. But these are like, yeah, some big prizes, and unfortunately, we're just not eligible. Which I, say, can, can I, I know, right? You know, I, every time I'm like, but I want to. Okay, four hundred, two hundred, a hundred and fifty, a hundred and four fifty dollar e gift cards. So if you win the whole enchilada, first place, it's a four hundred dollar e gift card. You got some. Like that's pretty awesome. Some fun money to go and splurge on. So that's a lot of snapple. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a lot of acrylic wash. It is a lot actually. of acrylic wash. Yes. So uh, the entries are from today, December first. Deadline is December fifteenth, which is also ironically a Tuesday. Oh. Um, is there a time frame? Is it like midnight, December fifteenth? Yeah, by end of the day. Okay. End of midnight. Yeah. Okay. So, by Eastern Standard Time, right? Because mm -hmm. that's where we are. So, you just have to get over that. So, from December 1st to December 15th, you can enter. Is there a limit on how many times they can enter? Just whatever? There's, you can, you enter can only enter once. Five times total, okay. but it has to be different days. Okay. So it's like one one entry maximum a day. Five entries maximum for the whole time. Okay? So... It, it, and it's all done at the end, so it's okay. It doesn't matter what day. We're not going to be like, this is for today. Forget it. So uh, the winners will be announced on Facebook and Instagram on Friday, December 18th. Because I would imagine there's going to be a lot of them to look through. So I'm going to imagine it's going to take a few days. Yes. Quite a few. So that is the last Art at Home Challenge of 2020. So get in on that, guys, because you can win some, even if, even a a five uh, a fifty dollar e gift card would still be it's free art money so yeah. um, and they will be e gift cards so you should get them in your email pretty yes. quickly yeah. yes so all right so everybody I would like to see some viewer participation with this I mean we always have viewer participation but let's knock this thing out of the park guys yes I'm calling on you live peeps let's do it yes so all right well. Um, I would like to thank Tina for this lovely shirt, our viewer Tina, because Tina just knows how much I love cows, and this it's, was, I'm so jealous. this cow has been in lots of artwork for Jerry's Live over the years, mm -hmm. and so, so I love my sh cow shirt, so thank you, Tina. Um, it's an awesome shirt. So, um, okay, so you said YouTube, what's the YouTube? Uh, YouTube, you can look me up by my actual name, which is Emmy Klein. And that's Emmy, just like the Emmy Awards, Klein, K L I N E. Um, you will see my hair is my my logo uh, mm -hmm. with crazy colors because I usually have multiple colors in my hair. Um, that is my YouTube channel, and then you can see my Instagram is misscakes.art. Uh, my website is misscakesart.com, which of course there are links to all my things on there. You can also find my Etsy. Uh, I believe that's under Miss Cakes Art. Um, Pretty much if you just search for Miss Cakes, you'll find me. Awesome. <laughs> for sure. We'll, we'll drop some links in there. Yeah. Right? Awesome. Well, thank you. What was your website one more time? Yes. Uh, MissCakesArt.com. Awesome. And I decided my early New Year's resolution is while we're off for December, I'm going to be better about, like, trying to do social media and maybe try to do some of, like, because I've got some commissions coming up, some mm -hmm. videos. So, uh, so I've got... At Amy Gardner Dean for Instagram, and then uh, I guess just at JR Dorama for my work Facebook, and then my own studio Facebook, 
is Crazy Dean Studios Amy Gardner Dean on Facebook. So um, that's where I put a lot of my like animal art type of yeah. stuff because Jerry's always, you know, it's a lot of animal art for Jerry's. So I, I go and put it on my, if it says Crazy Dane Studios, you know it's probably going to be animal related. So, so yeah, so, um, so look for some of that in the summer because I'm excited it's, it's time. I need to do something. So, yay. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And again, in it. January, do you know what the day is going to be in January that her show was going to premiere? January. Or just, January -ish. Yeah, so. just go to the Jerry's Artorama YouTube page, hit subscribe now. So you don't forget. So yeah. then when it's broadcast for the first time, when there's the great premiere, then uh, Miss Cakes will pop up and then you'll just, your day will be made. You'll be like, it's January already. And I get to shut up and paint. Yeah. So. And, then, and then you get to see me struggle on a couple of them. And you get to see me uh, do some awesome art as well. Because, I mean, some of it I'm really proud of. Some of it I really did not like it. But that's the struggle of an artist. So I hope you guys will join me for that fun journey. Awesome. But, yeah. Well, thanks, guys. It has been a great for Jerry's Live. I mean, we've I feel like we've had a pretty successful 2020. So uh, despite even with home craziness and videoing. So we've stuck it out. So you guys have a great rest of your year. Oh, have a wonderful December. Take care of yourselves and each other. And shut up and paint. <laughs> and we'll see you. In 2021. Yeah. Take care.